Welcome to the weekly hijack. Hello, everyone. Uh, uh, um, hmm. That might be one of my, I don't know, favorite, but most effect. I don't know. That was a particularly impressive Doctor Who episode. That was like, someone on Twitter said this was like old school Moffat, and yes. Yeah. <laughs> but he didn't have all the crazy, I mean, he had crazy, but it all worked, and it was, okay, I'll just tell you what, just jump to the end. The, of the, you know, when you realize it's him, which I, you get hints of, but you're like, but he's just there over, I don't Two know, that. Two billion years? I mean, that that freaks me out, okay? I mean, yeah. this that's that's horrible. That's horrendous. I love how they showed it. I know. They did a great job. And it just. Slower and then faster and then faster. And just, faster. I thought it was really And it just well got, it reminds me wow. of that, that song in the year 2525. I hate that song. No, but I'm watching that last scene with the it going faster, which is a genius with the music and the editing of that. But man, I just I just feel horrible watching that. And so I, I really like it when it's like some people say that you know what a long time. I say that's one heck of a bird. <laughs> well, and- yeah, for I'm like, why is he punching the thing? And then I slowly realize I'm like, no, <laughs> <laughs> he's pu- literally punching through the whole diamond. In that scene where he's eating the table, he starts wondering, like, is this this is hell for? I mean, that is a hell for you. It even is a time lord. And then you can the one time when he figured out what bird meant. You know, we didn't. He didn't explain this, but they do that weird scene. He walked back there and oh, see, I I had not gotten because that. bird. Because as we get at the end, the bird is about this this fairy tale. Where this bird goes to this crystal mountain every day, hits it with a peak, and that's how many seconds in eternity. And he sees that, you know, he finally realizes what bird means when he sees the ice. And he's like, okay, this is what I have to do is punch through this. And, the, you know, then you go back to that scene where he's in the TARDIS talking to Clara. And, like, I don't want to do this. I don't, can't I just lose for once? Yeah. So whatever he does next episode is probably completely justified. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> then they come and do this whole Galbraith thing. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> Well, and here's, I said before that they hadn't done all the classic Who stuff, but I guess there's one character that they hadn't done that they had said that they wouldn't ever do in Modern Who, and it made me wonder. But there was a character called the Valyard, which I guess was apparently an evil version of Doctor, like basically he's evil version from an alternate dimension or from yeah. his future or something. Yeah. And I guess they... they it gets so, conf- I don't know anything about it, but I just know it's supposed to be horribly confusing. Yeah, and that's why they cut it out. It's just... I mean, that prophecy sounds very sinister. Although, well, didn't, unless, they, didn't they drop his... when Back in the name of the doctor when he was giving his name, didn't they drop... You've been called this and this in the valley, or didn't they drop name drop that word yeah, back at the end of Matt Smith's run right before the war doctor? It's possible, yeah. That know. guy who came... You know, with the, what, three faces came trying to get the name out of Matt Smith? Yeah, that, that's, yeah that's entirely possible. I mean, I guess you could even say it to a degree... The guy who would stand in the ruins of Gallifrey, we sort of saw the war doctor doing that. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, that one scene of them, all the Daleks and the cities in ruins and all that stuff. But it seemed like that was leading to something else, just the way they said that statement. I'll tell you what, the, the atmosphere of this one, I mean, oh. Moffat does spooky well, but this one with the guy just following you and the digging your own grave it, it all felt and, very classical i mean i mean the classical soundtrack the whole time oh, but I also know. like the setting they very pulled gothic. all they pulled all the bells and whistles out for this one yeah this was a twilight zone doctor who and and you uh, we said early on because the doctor was alone for the whole time and just going through these hallways it yeah. felt I also felt very old school Doctor Who yeah. in some ways, you know, especially. And like you said, I don't think you could have done this with any other Doctor. There's any, not, I don't, none of the modern Doctors at least you could have pulled. Like Matt Smith's too frantic. Yeah. Um, Eccleston, you couldn't. Maybe some version of Tennant, maybe, uh, but he's the closest, know. but I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. Because, I mean, Colby, I think Eccleston could have done it. I could see Eccleston doing you it. You think maybe. so? It, I don't, well, the thing is, uh, Capaldi has such gothic demeanor anyway it's it works true. so well yeah he almost looks like someone from one of those old dracula movies but i mean yeah the atmosphere was you know when you get to the picture and like he's examining clara and it's like he's like this is really old well of course it would be super old oh yeah because it's you know and then all you know you watch it again you get all these things like you know it's not the day you die but all the days after where you're still dead i mean for he's thinking that this over and over again for the next two billion years I mean, luckily he can't. He doesn't actually remember it's been that long. He only lives the 
Yeah, that is one weird way of... Yeah, that's true. I hadn't thought of that. He, he may have been in there for two billion years, but he, he would feel for him like it was just this, the day after the, Clara died. Yeah, exactly. Which makes it a little less horrendous. But I think, I think there must be some... Especially when he realizes what's going on, some sort of psychic, like, this is insane. Yeah. I mean, punch in the... I mean, that's insane. <laughs> I mean, Moffat, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem is by the time he gets there and he thinks about it, he doesn't. I don't think he realizes it enough time to go back and get the shovel. No, I agree with you. I did the think of that. Going to get three hits each time, and well, and if he hadn't got, stopped to talk each time too. Could have done it in a million years. And that that monster just didn't need confessions. You know, it, it almost feels like. Well, I think the whole thing's trying to get the hybrid out of him. I think that's what they're oh, for. It could be, and he never ever does that. Well, and. Well, and here is a question about the confessions. If he has to do confessions, he's never told anyone. But everything that, resets. So even that resets. I think so. so now, I don't know why the diamond doesn't reset, except that's the center of the exit or something. I mean, I'm sure there was... The weak point. Or, there's a very... Yeah. That would be my only guess. Okay. Okay. And I feel like they did. he did explain this, but it might have went over my head. Why didn't he regenerate after the guy zapped him? Because he has a whole new regeneration cycle, and I felt like he said there was some reason why... Well, he says even... It takes a long time. I think they use that last energy to regenerate a lot many times, but that would have been a horrible idea if, once he figured out what was going on. Oh. Well, that would be my guess. So I mean, he was basically using his last energy every time to, to get restart. back to the room instead I think of so. regenerating. That okay. would be my guess. Okay. I, I, I could see that. I could see that. Because I think they have said before that there's limits to regeneration. Yeah, and maybe maybe it's – I mean it does, it does seem the guy that sucks out a lot of energy. Yeah. So he might have taken his regeneration energy too. Yeah, that's And possible. then just let him die. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's very possible too. But yeah, that was – that was trippy. A, that was a trippy, very – You had to stay very – pay very close attention to what was going well, on. Well, you know what? When he was holding the skull, I'm like, I bet that's his skull. And then I started, I did, it did occur to me that maybe all those skulls are him well, the, at some point. Well, the first time, like, when he leaves his coat in his clothes there and then, you know, yeah. right in the same place where he had found them, you and I looked at each other and was like, that seems like um, a ominous I mean, the, the only thing, sort. like, you don't get, again, I wouldn't complain about this really because the way it's set up, this is perfect, but I'm not sure he would do the exact same thing every time for yeah, $2 billion. One thing I But... <laughs> but then again, the the episode is set up so perfectly in this atmosphere that you really don't care. Yeah, I mean, there is a sense of it, it's that, about oh, the it's style a, of the story. It's a clo- you know, like at the end when the monster goes in the clock. It's a cl- piece of clockwork that works <laughs> effortlessly. You know, everything is meant to just re grind itself over and over again. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Okay. Moffat, that goes up with your classics, I think. Yeah, I, I think people have been waiting for a, like a classic because ever since the, he became a showrunner, he his focus has kind of been on these you know longer story arcs and things like that. We hadn't really had a bottle episode like yeah. this in a long when, time. And what I from think, him. I think the smart thing they've done because Matt Smith, he tried. Let's see how many different. Crazy plot lines can do, and sometimes it got a little nuts. I mean, a lot of fun. I mean, AKA I'm not going to River Song. <laughs> yeah, look, I'm not. It was great, but it, it was it, a lot of fun. It does seem like with Capaldi, he said, "Look, we're going to we're going to do the opposite." Especially this season, we're going to just this season. I think has been the strongest since. I mean, I really love the the season that was all about the River Song origins. Yeah, that was probably one of my my favorites of Matt Smith era. Yeah, this one though, I think has been the best season since then. It's been a. I mean. And I think slowing it down and focusing longer on individual stories has paid off really well. And it's about time to do such a thing. We've done so many other types of things. And Doctor Who's a show where you can just try things out. But especially with the way they, pl- you know, they made Capaldi and whatever. I know this has been good stuff. I mean, the only the only episode all season were kind of like meh was the Sandman episode. Oh yeah, which had a lot of interesting ideas. Well, yeah, exactly. That, that felt. Yeah. It felt incomplete after like all the very solid <laughs> two, stories, and they were had. all two parters. And <laughs> which this one, you know, this the, season finale is they three said very sort of, distinct episodes. Yeah, they. I think they all link into each other, but you can tell this one. The next episode is not going to be anything like this. No, because and it Thank was. Goodness. I think it was probably a good idea because. <laughs> I mean, good, but. And this is what they've done neat with the two parties. Each, even the two parties have been very different feels generally this season. A lot of times. You know, there's like you'll have the under the sea, which is very enclosed, and then you'll have the before the flood, which is more of a doctor, even more of a time travel one. Okay, yeah, that's true. 
And then you have the shield that wears Viking, and then it's and then whatever. Yeah, very different. I um, guess the uh, Davros two-parter was a little more distinct, although even that had Missy going crazy in the first half, yeah. and then more focus on Davros in the well, second half. Well, in the first half, you have them playing the guitar and the tank and all this stuff, and then it was... <laughs> okay, yeah, that's true. So they've done a really interesting job with the two-parters, so they don't feel stale or anything. Like Even the Zygon, you got this big story, and then you have basically a, a very a a, personal story. Down to a room and... Yeah. yeah. I think this will go down as at least one of the stronger seasons of a modern era. Modern era. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for listening to the Weekly Hijack. Um, be sure to stay tuned to our Derailed Trains of Thoughts feed. And until next time, this is Tim. This is Nick. Bye. Bye.